So these are the six things that people will tell you are the reasons why you cannot learn how to code. So if you identify with any of the next six things, then you should really consider quitting. Quitting listening to BS advice, son. Because the fact is that even if you check every single one of these boxes, it doesn't mean that you can't learn how to code, come on. So I'm gonna spend the rest of this video going over each and every one of these six things and debunk each one of these common myths for you so you can get back to work learning how to code. Oh, I'm terrible at math. Oh, well, believe it or not, this is a really false assumption that a lot of people make and I don't really know where it came from. You do not by any means have to be really good at math. In fact, in the you know 15 years that I've been doing software development professionally, the hardest math I've ever had to do is know how to add, subtract, divide, multiply, and understand what a remainder is when you're dividing two numbers together. And that is it. That is the most complex math I've ever had to do in the 15 years that I've been coding professionally as well as the 10 years that I've been teaching people professionally. So you don't have to be good at math. The part that you actually have to be good at when it comes to programming is to be able to problem solve. So if you've ever looked at a pile of boxes and stuff outside of your car, you know, the trunk of your car, and you're like mentally figuring out how do I put each box into the trunk of the car so that they're all gonna fit properly. Like that's the sort of problem solving that we're thinking of. What's the algorithm I'm gonna use? What thing am I gonna pick up first and put into the car's trunk first in order to make sure that everything fits together, okay? That's the type of problem solving that you need to think about in terms of the algorithms, the step-by-step -step process to go from where you are starting to where you want to be, the finished product, if you will. Oh, you know, I've been learning how to code now for like months and it just doesn't feel like anything is clicking. Now, you've been learning how to code for a little while now, months and months and months, and you aren't feeling like anything is clicking. That's extremely common, okay? This is not going to be an easy path. If it was, then everyone would have great jobs as coders and, and really then you wouldn't get paid a lot as a coder. So it's a good thing that it is hard. It's a good thing that you have to struggle because that's what separates you from everyone else who's going to quit before you. Now, in my opinion, this is speaking from 10 years of experience teaching people professionally how to code to so they get jobs and work in the real world. It's really a head hitting the pillow type situation. So the analogy I use is like playing, where is it, guitar. So when I played guitar and learning how to play guitar and music, you could spend all day trying to figure out how to play a tune and struggling at it and failing at it and feeling like you're never gonna get it and you go to bed frustrated and you wake up the next morning and you're, you know, begrudgingly going and picking up the guitar again and it just seems to flow naturally now. So understand that if it's not clicking yet, it could be because you have a the law of diminishing returns. You're spending too long on the same problem and not stepping back and taking a break. I just don't have enough time to get all this done. How does anyone get this done? How does anyone learn how to code? I don't have the time. So over the course of my teaching experience of about 10 years and training roughly about 4,000 different coders, what I've seen is that it takes about 15 to 20 hours a week of dedicated learning time as well as practicing time. Because if you're only watching videos and you're never actually applying what you're learning, you know, doing an actual assignment putting it towards an actual project and struggling in that way, then you're not gonna do well, right? You need about 15 to 20 hours per week. So what this does mean is, yes, you're gonna have to sacrifice something, okay? That's not an answer that people want to hear. They want it quick and they want it fast and they want it done yesterday. So this does take time and you will need to make sacrifices. Now, there are some hacks. There are ways to shortcut this process. On average, what we see from uh, the data points in aggregate is that if you're learning on your own, if you're a self-taught coder who is not really leveraging any sort of an expert to sit with them and focus their learning path, it takes about two-ish years or more, maybe about two and a half years on average, but you can shortcut that by going to something like a coding bootcamp. Coding bootcamps, if you find a good one, are designed to make the entire process as fast as possible. But like I said, that will still probably require you to do at least six to nine months of this kind of dedicated effort. In the coding bootcamp that I run, the majority of my students actually have 
families, and full-time jobs. So these people have a spouse, these people have one or two or sometimes more kids. So this can work. It is the majority of the people that I have in my program right now. You know, looking at my past, I was never a good student. I never really did well in class and never really got good grades. So maybe I'm just not smart enough for this. You know, this is something that I can really relate to because I was also a bad student. I just barely passed my, my university courses I just barely passed like the minimum grade you need in order to achieve your degree. And it was because the way I was being taught and the incentive structure around how I was being taught and what I was being taught was just not interesting to me. I didn't have teachers that really deeply cared and were passionate about the subjects that were being taught. I can remember one teacher who really enjoyed his his job and really enjoyed the topic that he was teaching. And that was the class that I actually got a high grade in. So when it comes to learning in general, having a teacher or a group of teachers that are truly passionate, who are truly interested in the subject that they are teaching and truly care about you and the outcome for you specifically, I think that you're gonna find that you you do much better in your pursuit of learning that particular thing. Now, having said that, if you've gone down this path and and you've been, you know, hacking away at this path and you had expert guidance and an expert showing you the way, not just self-taught, and you've been doing it for a few months, then yeah, maybe coding is not for you. Maybe you just don't find it interesting. However, there are different avenues in terms of coding, right? There's the back end, the server side. This is using languages like Java or Python or C Sharp or C++ or a plethora of other languages. This is the server side, and this is usually where your job is to take data from some source. It could be from a database or from a file. Um, you're reading data and you're bringing it in, and then you're doing something with that data. You're performing some sort of useful task on that data, and then you're spitting out that data and returning it out the other end. That's typically what someone does who works in the quote unquote back end, okay? If that's not interesting to you and that if that's all you've been learning about, well, there's something called the front end and the front end is where more of the creativity lies, okay? There's less algorithms and data structures and all that stuff, less science-y type stuff. The front end is more of the right brain side of things. It is the, okay, I want to create an image that represents what I want or what someone wants a website to look like. Rearranging elements on the screen, if that kind of thing sounds a lot more interesting to you, well, great, that's called front end development. Now there are some tie, there's you know, definitely tie-ins with the back end, with the server side, where you can grab that data that I talked about earlier with that back end person who's sending the data out once they've done something useful with it. The back end person will send the data to the front end person, which sometimes they can be the same person. That's called full stack when you're doing both front end and back end together. But the back end person can send the data to the front end person and the front end person will receive that data. And there is some of that algorithmic concept of, okay, I need to take this data and iterate through it. So there are different aspects to the coding career path. And even then, once you become a coder, if you're, you know, into your career and you're like, you know, this doesn't really fit well with me and what I like to do, there are other paths in the programming field where you can become a development manager, right? Then you're not doing the, the day in and day out coding stuff. You just need to have a high level understanding of code and you then therefore need to have a better skill set around teaching and working with people beneath you in your team, in your team structure, right? So there are ways to go very technical and then there are ways to go the managerial route. So. There's a lot of flexibility, a lot of stuff that comes from the tech route in general. I've even had people and coworkers go from writing code every day to switching to become a product person. So that's where you are thinking about the product. What would make the product be better for the users that are using it? How can we improve it in this way or that way? How can we add new features or, or what have you? So stick with it. It is very rewarding and you will hopefully find one of these different paths that you really enjoy and you really look forward to in terms of going to work on a Monday. I just started learning how to code and good Lord, the amount of buzzwords and the volume of information that's needed to understand this stuff, I don't even know where to begin. How does anyone do this? You know, what's really funny about this particular issue is that even a senior level programmer will feel that exact same pain. So myself been doing this for however many years now as a coder and my peers that I've worked with at a senior level who have 15 years, sometimes 20 years 
of experience can also feel the exact same way with the volume of, of information. There's always new things coming out. And you know what? That's what gives this career path longevity. There's always something new to learn. There's always industry changes that are coming through, especially with AI now. It is a constantly changing and evolving landscape. And again, this is what allows us to have one, high paying jobs as programmers and two, job security. Because as long as you're someone who wants to learn this stuff, who's interested in learning new things, and who can deal with that feeling of overwhelm with the amount of information out there, as long as you can start to realize that that's a normal feeling and everyone feels it, then you can become very dangerous and very valuable as a uh, an employee or even someone who can go and start their own software development company. It's true, it can happen. So with the overwhelm that happens, all you really need to do is focus on one stack, one tech stack. So what a tech stack is, a combination of maybe three to five languages and frameworks together that are commonly used together in the real world that are used together to create software. So for example, what I focus on is a tech stack around the Java language. Java is extremely popular on the marketplace when it comes to getting jobs. I'm all about helping people get jobs as programmers and Java and the stack that I use and teach is perfect for getting you ready for the real world and balances a job availability with career success outcomes like uh, actually you know, obviously getting the job and the salary that you get out on the other end as well as competitiveness and all you know I've, I've run the numbers and this stack is what I find is the most valuable for someone who wants to get a job and start their career in the field of computer science and programming. So the stack that I teach is a front end language stack like HTML, CSS, and typically JavaScript. Within JavaScript, there's a whole bunch of options. One of the most popular ones is React. So I focus on React there. Boom, that's the front end. On the back end, the server side, I use Java as the server side language. You will maybe have heard of other stacks like Mern, which is Mongo with Express and React and Node. There's all these different stacks that are popular and used in, in the common uh, workspace, in the common workplace, I should say. So focusing on just one of those stacks and completely shutting your ears off and ignoring everything else, every other news article, every other distraction that could possibly make you start to feel overwhelmed, stop, ignore it, it is not important. I have built an entire 15 year career where I can earn multiple six figure salary with one tech stack. So focus, don't get distracted, learn from an expert who can get you through that stack quickly. You know, I look around at everyone else that's learning how to code around me and they all seem to just get it. They all seem to be doing better than me. It seems like it's so much easier for them. Am I not cut out to do this? You know, this is funny because I run a coding bootcamp and I'm able to join calls with my students and talk to them about their journey in learning how to code. And I asked them, I said, guys, who here thinks that everyone else is going faster than them and doing a better job than them? And I kid you not, every single one of the 15 people put their hands up, every single one had the feeling that everyone else around them was smarter than them and doing a better job than them and going faster than them, okay? So this is imposter syndrome. This is this belief that we have between our two ears that make us think that we're not good enough, that make us think that other people have some secret or some key or some advantage or something that is allowing them to be better than they are. And let me tell you, there are not many gifted people out there when it comes to learning how to code. There are not many gifted people out there when it comes to actually working professionally as coders. I know I have worked across multiple organizations in multiple different disciplines and fields. I have seen a lot of people with respect to coders, as well as those who are brand new coming up and learning it for the first time. It is like the top 2% here that we're talking about who are truly gifted and geniuses around learning this stuff. The other 98% or the other whatever percent that you perceive is better than you could just be people that are putting in more effort than you. It is just that they're putting in more reps, more time, and that is it. So the only thing separating you in your mind between you and someone who you think is doing better than you is just the amount of time that they've put into it. And guess what? You can put that same amount of time into it as well. It just takes planning in terms of your day and giving up some stuff and making sacrifices with getting up earlier or staying up later to get extra work in and extra reps in. 
okay? And if that doesn't seem reasonable to you and that doesn't seem like something you want to do, then it's not imposter syndrome you're dealing with here. It's just your lack of desire to either go faster or your lack of interest in the topic to begin with, okay? It is not because you are any less talented than any other person. You just need to put the time and effort into this practice. It is that simple. So there you go, my fellow coders. If you're someone who is currently on this journey of learning how to code and any of these statements have resonated with you, please share your story below because you sharing your struggles below in the comments is going to greatly impact someone else's life and make them say, oh my gosh, someone else is in this with me too. And better yet, if you are someone who is a seasoned professional developer, you are currently working on the job and you're watching this video and you resonated with any of these things that I've talked about, please leave it in the comments below and let people know that you have experience in the real world and you are feeling the exact same thing or maybe that you felt the exact same thing when you were first starting up becoming a coder. The most important thing that we can do for each other right now is to understand that we are a community out there. We are the same and we are all going through the same struggles. So please reach out in the comments and let other people know that they are not alone. And if you can do that and stop someone from quitting and tapping out and actually pushing forward and achieving their goal of becoming a professional programmer, just imagine the difference that you can make in someone else's life. Please share below.